Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekly meal prep video. If you're new to my channel, hi, I am a full-time working mom. I have two kids. Kira is nine and Connor is six. My husband also works full-time outside the home. And so every weekend I try to get some meal prepping done so that we can have snacks and lunches and maybe even some dinner prep for during the work week. So I have been doing keto slash low carb during the week for the last couple of months, but I have started shifting less towards keto and more towards low carb. So in this meal prep, you will definitely see some recipes that you can use if you are doing keto or low carb, but these are actually recipes that anyone can use. And there's even a muffin recipe that my kids will be eating that is a healthier spin on a chocolate muffin. So I hope you'll stick around and let's Let's get started. I will show you what I'm planning on making this week. So to get started, I always like to make a list just so I have a roadmap of what I'm going to make. So today I want to make some hard boiled eggs, some grilled chicken, veggies and dip, egg bites with bacon, some muffins, and then some snack containers with cheese and nuts. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my chicken since I want that to sit in my marinade for a little bit before I cook it. The reason I'm prepping this this week is actually because one night for dinner we're going to have cob salads and so it's easier for me if I can prep the chicken on the weekend. We can just pull it out of the fridge and assemble our salads and it will be a nice quick dinner for us. So to season the chicken I'm adding some garlic paste some salt and pepper along with some lemon juice and then i'm also going to add some oregano and some crushed red pepper just a little bit not so it's so spicy that my kids won't eat it and then i'll also drizzle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil over there i just kind of spread the garlic paste around with a fork to make sure that it gets evenly distributed and then i will turn the pieces over and do the same thing to the other side I like to let this marinate for about two hours before I cook it on the stove. That way it gets nice and flavored. Um, I do get some questions about the garlic paste and where you can find that. I actually find it at Walmart. It's in the produce section, um, kind of in the refrigerator case where the other herbs are at. So I definitely love that. It's nice and fresh tasting, but it saves you the step of having to chop garlic. So once this is marinated for a couple hours, I'm just going to put this in a hot nonstick skillet. I went ahead and just sprayed it with cooking spray to make sure that the chicken didn't stick. Um, you don't have to add any extra oil because you've already marinated the chicken in some olive oil. So the likelihood that it will stick to the pan is pretty low. So I'm just going to put all those in there, let them sear on one side and turn them over. After the chicken is done cooking, I let it rest on a plate covered with foil for about 30 minutes until it is cool enough to handle. And then I just put it on a cutting board and slice it into small chunks with my knife. Lightning strikes by my window. It's my chest right in the morning. Once you're done chopping up all the chicken, you can actually just take the juice that the chicken was resting in and pour it over the container. That way it will not dry out in your refrigerator. Next, I'm going to make some hard boiled eggs in my instant pot. This is my new favorite way to make uh, hard boiled eggs now. It just is so much easier to peel the hard boiled eggs. I use the 555 method. So you um, cook the eggs on high pressure for five minutes. I just add a cup of water under the trivet and then you do a natural pressure release for five minutes and then you soak them in ice water for five minutes and they peel so easily. I actually had several different cartons of eggs that I was working from and even the eggs that were newer were super easy to peel. So um, what I'm planning on doing with these this week is I might make some deviled eggs with some. I know that I want to make some snack boxes and so I'll probably put a couple of those in there and then on the night when we have cob salads I will slice them up and put them on our salads.
Okay, so I have all my eggs peeled. I'm just going to go ahead and put those into a glass container and I will get those in the fridge for later in the week. Um, you can see there that I have all my shells on the counter. I prefer to do it over a paper towel just so I can kind of wick up the excess moisture. And then I also rinse my eggs in a bowl of cold water to make sure I get all the shells off. The next thing I'm going to make is some homemade ranch and dill dip that we can have with veggies this week. So I'm just using two cups of sour cream along with the recommended two tablespoons of ranch seasoning. I got this larger uh, jar at Costco, but of course I can't just make it the way the package suggests. I have to jazz mine up a little bit. So I love adding a little bit of extra dried dill and I also add a little bit of extra garlic powder along with salt and pepper. And then I just stir that up really well. This is best if you make it ahead of time and let it sit in the refrigerator to let the flavors combine. But what I'm doing is just putting this in some dressing and dip containers and I'm going to make some veggie packs with dip so that we can take those with us to to work. For the rest of the dip, I'm just going to put that in a one cup glass container and put that in the refrigerator and we can have that at home to snack on during the football games uh, this weekend. So I also wanted to get some produce washed up. I just picked up a couple of broccoli crowns at the grocery store. I'm just cutting those into my salad spinner. I always have this linked in the description box below in all my cooking videos. I would totally recommend this one. It is the OXO brand and I love that it comes with the insert so that you can soak your veggies and get them nice and clean. So for broccoli, I just like to soak that in cold water, kind of rinse off any dirt that may be on it and then drain it really well. I also wanted to cut up a head of cauliflower. There were a few spots on this one, so I'm just shaving those off with my knife. And then how I like to cut cauliflower is just quarter it, and then I cut the core out and then just chop up the florets. And I will wash that the same way as I do the broccoli. So I also bought a orange bell pepper to cut up and put into my veggie packs. I wanted to get a red one, but they weren't looking too gray, and so I got an orange one instead. So I will just slice that up and then assemble my bags. Um, I basically just use small Ziploc bags. You could use reusable containers if you wanted to. Uh, right now, space is at a premium in my fridge, and so I'm trying to put some things in reusable containers and some things in Ziploc bags just because everything will not fit in there. So. I just put the veggies in the bottom of the bag, stick one of the dressing cups in there, and these will be good to go all week for us. One tip I do have is I've put cucumber in these before, but I would not recommend it. Uh, the cucumber tends to get too like wet and slimy if you leave it in the fridge cut up for too many days. So for these, I'm just using carrot chips, the orange pepper, um, and the broccoli and the cauliflower along with the dip. I actually picked this hummus up from Aldi the week before and hadn't used it yet so I thought it would be good to put into some of those little dip cups and take to work along with some cut up veggies. So there was just enough in there to make four cups and then I'm going to make four uh, veggie packs to go with those so that I can take um, veggies and hummus to work. These little containers are Sistema. I'm sure you can find something similar on Amazon but I've actually gotten these at Aldi randomly over the years. So on one side I'm putting the hummus along with some broccoli and cauliflower and then the other side I will just put some carrot chips. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to work on is just making some protein snack box containers. I found these containers on Amazon and I really like them. I will leave a link to them 
uh, down below if you're interested. But these are great to take to work or on the go for a quick snack. So in these, I am putting some beef sticks and turkey sticks, cutting those up in one container. Also some sharp cheddar cheese and some roasted almonds. I get those blue diamond almonds from Walmart. And then I'm just putting one sliced hard boiled egg in one of the containers and sprinkling over some of the uh, everything but the bagel seasoning. So here is what they look like. These are great even for a quick lunch or a breakfast just to grab out of the fridge and go. Okay, so next I had some grapes that I needed to get washed up. This is probably one of my least favorite prep jobs, but it's just something that has to be done. I refuse to spend the money to buy pre-washed grapes and uh, I have to wash them, otherwise uh, they just sit in the fridge and we don't eat them. So. Um, I just wanted to show you guys the importance of washing your grapes. So after I uh, get all these off of the stems and into my salad spinner, I'll show you my hands. But for some reason, this was like a particularly dirty batch of grapes. And I know I've said this before, but it is so important to thoroughly wash your produce. Um, I know that there are people out there that maybe don't wash their produce or just rinse it quick but honestly after I have been prepping food all this time um, all the dirt that I have seen makes me want to wash everything even more so it might be hard to see on camera um, but yeah my hands were just like really gross and grimy after I peeled all those off so anyway how I like to wash my grapes is just put them in a big bowl of really cold water I add just a splash of vinegar to the water and then I let those soak for 10 to 15 minutes just to loosen up any of the dirt and then I can just lift them out of that dirty water, give them a good rinse and I will store them in the fridge uh, for the upcoming week. Every night I'm going on the grid, texting back, I want you. Hit you up, I'm on the next thing I'm going to prep is some chocolate muffins. This recipe came from sallysbakingedition.com. I will link it below. So you'll need some cocoa powder for this, some sugar, but I'm actually using a low carb sweetener, some unsweetened applesauce, some vanilla extract. You'll also need one egg or two egg whites, one cup of flour, some vanilla Greek yogurt. I'm using the Sola brand, some baking soda, some baking powder, salt, some honey, and then some mini chocolate chips. So I wouldn't exactly call these muffins keto, but I would probably call them low carb for a muffin. Um, I've been trying to find different things for my kids to eat that aren't so full of carbs and sugar. Obviously kids love carbs, but it's not healthy for them to be eating just carbs, carbs, carbs all day long. Both of my kids really love to eat muffins for breakfast and so at times I have bought the little like packets of muffins that are either like chocolate chip or blueberry and I don't mind if they have those every once in a while but it's not something that I want them to eat all the time and so I was just kind of exploring on Pinterest see, seeing if I could find a chocolate chip muffin recipe that was just a little bit um, healthier and I found this one. I obviously substituted the low carb sweetener for sugar, but you could definitely use regular sugar if you weren't concerned about that. Um, the honey does add quite a bit of sugar though, and so in the future I might try adding something else instead of that. But anyway, back to my original point, I put all the ingredients into my fitness pal and calculated it out for 12 muffins. And each muffin has only 94 calories and 12 grams of sugar in each one as I prepared them. So actually, I don't really think that that's too bad um, for a chocolate muffin. So for the uh, muffins, all you do is just whisk all the wet ingredients together. And then I went ahead and used a strainer to sift my cocoa powder and all my other dry ingredients into the bowl. Um, the batter does turn out to be uh, quite a bit thick. Um, so I had to work a little bit to get everything mixed in. But once I did that, I was able to put it into my muffin cups. So I'm just going to stir in my mini chocolate chips. If you really wanted to make this super low carb, I suppose you could try using almond flour and then using the low sugar chocolate chips. If any of you guys try that, I would love to hear how that worked out for you. Um, as far as the muffin cups, I'm actually going to use my silicone cups because I think they just 
help the uh, muffins turn out so much easier. I love using them. So I just put those in spray with a little bit of cooking spray and then I'm just spooning in the batter as evenly as I can. I had a couple different sizes of like the cookie and muffin scoopers like that look like the ice cream scoopers but uh, one of them got lost when we moved and the other one broke and I just haven't got any replacements yet so I definitely need to get on Amazon and order a few of those but uh, due to my sloppy skills you'll see when these come out of the oven they don't really look the prettiest but they still tasted good so I went ahead and put those in the oven you bake them at 425 for five minutes and then you turn the temperature of the oven down so they can cook through but uh, there are actually, I just made these yesterday and there are only like seven of them left. Adam ate one last night. Connor ate one last night. He ate two for breakfast this morning. Kira ate one for breakfast. So they've just been uh, going through them like crazy, which um, I am happy that I know what is in them. And this will definitely become a staple for me to make for breakfast and snacks for them. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to prep is my egg bites. You can see that it was getting dark out. Um, I had the lights on on the island above my kitchen, but for some reason these clips were a little bit dark, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm just making one batch of the egg bites this weekend, so I'm adding four eggs to a um, dish that has a spout on it so I can pour it easier. And then you just add some shredded cheese, half a cup of cottage cheese and a quarter cup of either heavy cream or half and half. I used half and half. I also put a little bit of salt in there, some pepper and some sriracha. And then I just went ahead and blended those up with an immersion blender. Um, someone actually commented on my last video and said that they made them uh, without using the blender and they turned out fine. So that's good to know that you don't necessarily need that. I'm going to cook these in the instant pot and so I just have some pre-cooked bacon that I cooked at breakfast this morning. So I'm just going to crumble that and put it down into the little uh, silicone molds. I'll leave a link to this particular one down below if you're interested in having it for your instant pot. And then you can just pour over the egg mixture. You can actually fill them all the way up to the top. They will puff up as they cook but after they cool they'll shrink back down. So I tried to pour that in as evenly as I could and then what you want to do is just put your trivet in the bottom of your instant pot I've already added one cup of cold water to the bottom and then you can carefully kind of settle your egg bites down in there uh, you'll go ahead and close the lid and put it on the steam setting for eight minutes and then once it's done steaming you can go ahead and let it do a natural pressure release for 10 minutes before you remove them Okay, so here are my completed egg bites. You can see they are nice and cooked and puffed up. These have definitely become a staple in our house for breakfast. So let's just recap everything I made today. I made the lower sugar uh, chocolate muffins, which turned out really great. The egg bites, which we can take for breakfast with a side of avocado during the work week. The protein snack boxes with the meat and cheese and nuts and hard boiled egg. I also made a few yogurt parfaits. I did not film these, but these yogurt containers are from Walmart. I just put some low carb yogurt in the bottom with some blueberries, and then I put some uh, granola on top with some coconut chips. So we can take those for breakfast or the kids can take them in their lunches. I also made the carrots and broccoli and cauliflower with the hummus as well as the veggie packs. So broccoli, cauliflower, um, carrots, and peppers along with a little bit of that ranch sour cream dip. And then I also prepped my hard boiled eggs so I can make those into deviled eggs or use them on salads. I also have the grilled chicken that I prepped for our cob salad this week. So that will be delicious. Um, I went ahead and put it in a plastic container since I'm not gonna be heating it up. And then I did not film this either, but for breakfast this morning, I made the kids Nutella crepes and I had leftovers. So I went ahead and just put those in a Ziploc bag with wax paper between them. And I'll go ahead and freeze those for later use. I also went ahead and washed up my grapes. So there are those in a bag along with the extra broccoli and cauliflower that we can have. So that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this meal prep video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.